from 960 feet below the ground to 170 feet above it, 26 million gallons on the way. All the way from when you first wake up in the morning to take a shower, to when restaurants start making food, to when you finally go to bed at night and you turn off the water. More than 10,000 valves, 400 miles, 25,000 water meters, tested and clean of 60,000 contaminants. We're all about Bloomington water. Welcome to Bloomington Today, I'm Reed Erickson, thanks for joining us. A Bloomington tap connects you to some of the best water in the state. It keeps us safe from disease because it's clean. Hydrants protect us from fire, which keeps our homes safe and insurance rates low. It supports the local economy. We need clean water for business. From soda fountain to washing machine, Bloomington tap water delivers. Bloomington's treatment process starts in the Mount Simon or Jordan aquifers. Aquifers are like giant underground lakes. The rock that they're made of is easy for water to move through. Bloomington owns six wells to pull raw water out of the ground and send it up to the plant for treatment. We saw the pump, um, when it spins, it lifts the water up. And once it lifts it up to its maximum height, it flows downhill. So of the six wells, they have a collector pipe that collects the water from all the wells and brings it right here to the treatment plant. It's not very often that you see the parts of a municipal well out of the ground, and that is exactly what these white pipes are. You can see there are quite a few of them here. This is the part that actually goes down into the groundwater, but this impeller is what makes it work. Inside of each one of these blue bulbs are a set of blades that actually lift the water from the ground. They are connected to a motor on the top via a stainless steel drive shaft. And you can see with all of these pipes, we can reach pretty deep. Earlier today, crews pulled this well apart to be refurbished. It takes a lot of effort and quite the tool set to pull the machinery out of the ground. The contractors unscrew each piece of the drive shaft and casing. The assembly is so heavy, a crane does the lifting. Each one of the wells are uh, constructed. They have a big, they start out with like a 30 inch hole underground. Uh, they'll dig it down. These are down roughly about 450 feet. Um, they drive some casing on the outside down to, so the hole doesn't cave in and then they develop the well and all a developing really means is they create cracks and fissures so water can work its way in there. The water plant typically cycles through the wells but during hot summer days it may have all of them cranking to keep up with demand. The wells produce 77 percent of Bloomington's water. They pull it out of the ground and send it to the plant for treatment. But in a pipe chase on the north side of town is a 36 inch butterfly valve that connects the city to the other 23 percent. This is the inlet line from Minneapolis to the 82nd Street Reservoir, the 36 inch line. And in here we have the inlet valve. Bloomington purchases supplemental water from Minneapolis. Minneapolis water comes through from Minneapolis through here and then into the round or square reservoir. This line is so big, it takes 45 minutes for the machinery to completely open or close it. Minneapolis pumps and treats water from the Mississippi River. In Bloomington, the wells are just the beginning. <laughs> Bloomington's wells lifted 3.5 billion gallons of water from the ground for treatment in 2009. In 2009, Bloomington purchased 1.3 billion gallons of water from Minneapolis. In the event of an emergency, water plant operators can switch and exclusively send Bloomington or Minneapolis water into the system. Bloomington well water heads to the Sam Hobbs water treatment plant. And though it looks like a giant indoor swimming pool, there's no diving there. The very first step that we have is softening. And that's where we take and we ramp the pH of the water up as pH goes up, hardness precipitates out. The water softened in this large tank called the Contact Solids Basin. Water starts in the middle and works its way down, around a large cone, and up to the top. As you'll see a turbine spin, that's just mixing the water up, helping the chemical reaction go to completion. Then on the outside of it is actually a clarifier. So as the solids build up, we want them to settle down to the bottom. These wheel spokes are about a foot deep. 
they grab the clearest water off the top and send it to the recarbonation basin. Like your fizzy water or soda, the city adds CO2 to the water. This CO2 doesn't create a bubbly beverage. Carbon dioxide reacts with water, forms carbonic acid. The acid neutralizes the base. Chemistry for the day. So now you've softened the water and you've adjusted the pH so everybody can drink it. After the pH is corrected, plant operators add a small amount of chlorine to kill any microbes. Then they send it through a stack of media. But this is exactly what the filter looks like. This is the anthracite coal portion. And then we have a, a washed sand. And then we have a very fine garnet sand. And the important thing, like I said, like a coffee filter, you're looking at pore size. These size pores are very, very, very tiny. These are a little bigger and these are much bigger. So this catches big particles. This catches smaller and smaller particles. After the water's filtered, it's sent to a holding tank called the clear well. Fluoride is added for strong bones. Ammonia is added to neutralize the smell and taste of the chlorine. Water in the clear well is now finished. From there, it's sent out to the distribution system. Check this out. The only byproduct of the water treatment process is the lime slurry. After the chemical reaction is done in the contact solids basin, the lime is sent here where it binds and thickens. Multiple times a day, the city tanker hauls the used lime from the treatment plant to the city's lagoons. This is the hardness that comes out of the water. It's primarily calcium and magnesium. Um, that's why it's white, because it's fairly pure. It only takes two or three minutes for the truck to unload. It looks just like pancake batter, um, but it'll dry out here to about 50% solids. It makes a really um, strong cake. It's almost like wet clay at that point. Um, then we hire an excavator to come out. He'll dig all this material out of the ponds, and we take it to farm fields. It's agricultural lime at this point. It's high-grade agricultural lime. Farmers love it. Um, as plants grow, they take up a lot of calcium, um, and soil, soil becomes starved of calcium. Um, and you're re-nutrifying the soil so the farmers can get maximum yield of their crops. It kind of completes that whole cycle of calcium in the, uh, in the Earth's system, so to speak. These lagoons are one of many ways the city of Bloomington works to become even more sustainable. It goes all the way back into the 70s. We've been renewing this product, getting it out into farm fields. They're getting a product at no cost to them that helps their farm fields a lot. You have safe, clean drinking water, and farmers have a renewable nutrient source for their fields. But water isn't to your tap yet. We start it flowing next. The city of Bloomington's water treatment plant can produce 15 million gallons of treated water per day. The Tri-City Analytical Laboratory runs more than 400 tests of Bloomington water per week. And in 2009, they performed 24,500 tests. Bloomington Today, All About Water, returns after the break. <laughs>